Okay, so we're looking at the next uh, video in the statistics, and that is collecting data, okay, or the size of the data sets. Okay, so this the first one that we're looking at is what we call a population, okay? So the population is every element that relates to the investigation. Now that might be, if we're looking at things at school, it might be all the students at Marici. A uh, bigger one might be, uh, the population might be the people in Australia. Or another example might be the Catholics in a particular parish. Or it might be the students in a class. Okay? So any of those things is a population. Okay? But normally they're big numbers. Um, like 30 kids is not really a population uh, per se. But it's every element that relates to the investigation. So if the investigation relates to a class, then that's the population. Uh, copy and come across. Okay, so the other one, the other type is called a sample. Okay, so a sample is just a part of the population. It's not a big, all of it, it's just a part of it. So for instance, if the population was Marici College, then a portion might be the year nine students, or a portion might be girls as part of a co-ed school, or it might be people in the ACT when compared to the whole country. And what they say in the book is, a good sample size is around 50 or more because you can, you can make a decision based on 50 people or more. Okay, so they say that uh, 50 or more makes a good sample size. So copy that and come across. Okay, types of data collection. So for instance, you would have all seen surveys. Okay, so surveys are uh, data is collected from parts of the population or parts of the sample. So you don't ask everybody, you just take a sample. Okay. A census, which we just had uh, this year in 2016, is data collected from the entire population. So we had a census in Australia because everyone had to do it. And the last one, experimental, um, is data collected by measuring or counting or assigning labels. Okay, So experimental uh, data collection you would have done in science and things like that. Okay, Copy that and come across. And the last, the last bit uh, is types of samples. You can have a random sample, you can actually have a biased sample as well, we'll come to that in a sec, or you can have what's called a stratified. So in a random sample, all elements of the population have an equal chance of being selected. Okay? All elements have an equal chance. But for instance, if we were looking at music tasting at Marici College as a, as a sample, if you only ask Year 9 students, you would bet a bias sample to what Year 9's like. So it has to represent everybody, not just one particular group of people. Okay? If you only ask a, a, a smaller group, you can get bias, and you don't want to get bias, especially if you're going to make decisions. So just watch out for bias. And this last one, to avoid bias, um, what we do is you take a stratified sample. So all groups are represented fairly based on their proportions. So for instance at Marici, if all the students at the college all had, if they all had say for instance 150 students, I'm just making up a number. So just for instance they all had 150 students, then if you, uh, whatever sample size, you've got to ask one sixth of the people that you ask have to be from each of the year groups. So if you have 60 people in the survey, then you need to ask 10 from each of the year groups, and then you would have a stratified sample. Um, if the fractions are different, like these fractions have to add to one, but if the fractions would, you know, one six was year seven and one third was year eight, then you'd have to base it on those numbers of your 60 people, okay? So when you know the fraction in each year group, that's how many people you have to ask. One sixth of 60 would give you how many people you have to ask for a stratified sample. And there's the exercise to do, exercise 14A, page questions 4, 5, 6, 8, 9. Thanks, bye.